This week on the Hollywood in Total podcast, we connect the dots between Friends, Barbie, and an overnight sensation that has the media spitting mad. And we talk with comedian and actor Tyler Fisher. He's not afraid to mock Trump, Biden, or Fauci. And does anyone do a better Owen Wilson impression? <laughs> Spoiler alert, no. <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood and Toto podcast, entertainment news and reviews without the woke Hollywood narrative, free speech, free expression. Now that's entertainment. And here's your host, award-winning film critic, Christian Toto. Before we begin, I hope you'll subscribe to the Hollywood and Toto podcast. And once you're done, tell a friend about the show. Word of mouth still rocks in 2023. How analog, right? Remember the Rachel? That's the hairstyle Jennifer Aniston wore on Friends back in the day. It caused the sensation. Everyone wanted the Rachel. More recently, women started wearing pink, a lot of pink, after seeing the summer's mega smash, Barbie. Pop culture matters. It does. And it's not just about fashion trends. Gay marriage came to America on the heels of shows like Will and Grace and Modern Family. Remember Cam and Mitch? Who doesn't love Cam and Mitch? President Biden even said as much about 10 or so years ago. I think Will and Grace probably did more to educate the American public than almost anything anybody's ever done so far, Biden said. Sometimes he's lucid, really, but that was, of course, back in the day. That explains why the press went to war with both Sound of Freedom... And now, Richmond, north of Richmond. Of course, the former is that indie blockbuster made, oh gosh, 170 plus million dollars stateside. It's amazing. But its sin, of course, was raising awareness about child sex trafficking. You can't do that. That's that's outrageous. That's why the media turned its guns on the movie. Also attacked its star, Jim Caviezel, and just about anything related to the project. Remember that it was... 6,000 plus people helped raise money to promote the film. And when one of those 6,000 people got in trouble with the law, well, that was a major story. That's the level of attack. But now the press is trying very, very hard to do the same with Oliver Anthony. And if you don't know the name, you probably will very soon. He's the Virginia resident whose blue collar anthem, Rich Men North of Richmond, is the biggest song in the country. Now, so far, the media's come up mostly empty in their attacks on Anthony. But it's not for lack of trying, which we explored last week. But why would the press even care about an overnight sensation like Anthony? Whoa, why bother? Well, it packs a populist appeal that leans to the right. That's why. It's as simple as that. The press is just a function, a, a part of the Democratic Party. They're, they're, there's no space between the two. They're one and the same. If you don't believe me, do you think it's an accident that reporters are giving President Biden a pass on his incompetent response to the Maui fires? When they first asked him about it, do you know what he said? No comment. No comment. There are fires raging in part of the country. People are hurt. People are dying. Billions of loss in money. No comment. <laughs> really? No comment? That's the best you can do? And they went back to vacation, of course. Multiple vacations. Gee, you think the press should maybe be a little critical of that? No, because they're part of the Democratic Party. Sorry to get political here, but it's an aside that's important. Now, reporters also use their platform these days to promote liberal causes and, of course, diminish right-of-center causes. And if a movie like Sound of Freedom, which is really apolitical and not faith-based, if it attracts a conservative audience, a Christian audience, it, it's got to be punished, and we're seeing it in real time. And now the same holds true for Anthony, again, whose sin is making a song that drew some cheers from conservative influencers. Oh, the horror, right? He must be burned at the stake. Pop culture does matter, and it does so more than ever in 2023. Just wait till next year. It's why so many movies and TV shows are buried in progressive messaging. They want to change hearts and minds. And that's why in the rare occasions the right gets a toehold on pop culture, the press, again, a.k.a. the Democratic Party, will do whatever it takes to clamp it down, to stop it. But guess what? It's not working anymore. This week's guest made the country laugh a lot at Dr. Anthony Fauci during the pandemic. For that alone, he deserves a medal. 
Tyler Fisher's Fauci impressions went viral for all the right reasons during the pandemic. They cut to the core of the not-so-good doctor and gave us a lot of relief for all those misdirections. The impression wasn't cruel, though, and that's the critical point. But that's Tyler Fisher. He can mock Trump one moment, make fun of Biden the next. It never seems like he's trying to score political points, a la Alec Baldwin, on Saturday Night Live with his Trump impression. How rare is that? And how cool is that? Now, Fisher's range of impressions includes Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, and the Butterscotch Stallion. (laughs) That's the nickname that actor Owen Wilson has in Hollywood circles. Always makes me laugh. And boy, Fisher nails him. Wow, Owen Wilson, dude. It's so good to meet you. It's so good to meet you. I'm a big fan of yours. Come on. I'm a big fan of yours. What? Jeez. Jeez. Wow. wow. Dude, you're like, I've heard it, but you're so nice. Like, even nicer than... Dude, you're like so grounded. I was going like, to say the same it's thing, like, dude. You're grounded. Ground. Oh, dude, like, it's like, I feel like it's, it's like, like Tom. Tom. Like, ground, ground control, control to Major, Major Tom. Tom over here. <sighs> what? You're blowing my mind right you're now. You're blowing my mind. <sighs> Wow. All right, I can't do it like Tyler can. Now, he delivers killer content on YouTube. He's got his latest comedy special called The New Normal. You can find that on YouTube as well. Gosh, why do you even bother watching TV these days? There's really cool stuff on YouTube. You know, when I talked to Tyler, I tried not to laugh during the interview. I tried to be professional. And I, as you're about to hear, I failed miserably. He's just too funny. But I think you'll still enjoy my chat with a very funny actor and comedian, Tyler Fisher. Tyler, welcome back to the show. Now, you are busy as always. You've got a video show going on. You wrapped a new movie, and I love your social media updates. They kill me. I just, you know, I never knew you nice. could imitate Owen Wilson until you did it. I don't know if anyone else does that, but yours is just killer. But I want to start oh, real briefly with the movie. I, I know you can't share a lot about it, but tell us a little bit and also how you were able to make it because I know a lot of the actors are not working right now. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so I just wrapped up a... A comedy film. Uh, we haven't. It hasn't been announced yet, so I'll try to say as much as I can without <laughs> without revealing it. Um, it is. Uh, it does cover a topic that would be considered, I would say, untouchable territory in Hollywood. Oh gosh! So, um, which makes it all the more exciting for it to to be announced. Yeah, uh, I'll let people use their imagination. There's th- <laughs> though. There's like a thousand topics now. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be really funny. And I, I think a lot of, a lot of the country, probably the world is, is going to be very excited, um, to have a comedy about this, <laughs> this unmentionable topic. Excellent. And, um, and yeah, yeah. So and you it, know, it was a non-union film. I want to get into that in a second, but you know, we last saw you on screen in Terror on the Prairie and you, you had your comic energy. That was a more serious movie though, obviously. So I'm, I'm glad to see you in this direction as well, because this is obviously your strength. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you were able to work, because I think that's interesting because most people can't, a few can, but there's a lot of wiggle room here. So maybe you can share more about that. Sure. Yeah. So there's something called FICOR, which I'll be joining, Financial Core. I, I believe it's for every union uh, across, um, every industry. It's not just for acting, Mm. but I think there's a law passed. I I don't know if it was in the seventies or something or when it happened, but essentially it said, you know, if you're in a union and there's a strike or, you know, let's say you're on strike for two years and you can't work, this gives you the opportunity to go and and do non-union work at your own risk. Gotcha. So SAG does a great job of scaring the crap out of their members. <laughs> and it, it, it really, it's, it is, um, it's almost like a suicide hotline. Like they have a department that kind of talks you off the ledge and, 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 and makes you think that you'll, you know, your life will be destroyed. But basically you hand in your SAG card and, and the only loss is you can't vote in their whatever the heck. Yeah. I don't even know what they're voting on, you know, probably some diversity crap mm-hmm. and, and basically you can't vote and you don't get the free DVDs, which I throw in the garbage anyways. <laughs> and so because of that, I was able to go off and do these non-union films, which were the only acting gigs I was offered, you know, over mm-hmm. the last uh, couple of years. Yeah. Well, it's 
kind of good news wrapped up in some bad news, but I'm glad that your opportunity sure. is still so, there yeah, for you. So yeah, go ahead and if you're an actor and you're in the SAG, and I believe only 5% make a living, oh. you know, of SAG members, which is tragic. So, you know, the actors need to work. And, and I, I understand why we have unions and I'm, I'm pro union in some aspects, but, but Google FICOR and mm. um, you can, you can YouTube some, some actors explaining, you know, that they, their lives were not ruined by it. Sure. sure. Excellent. Well, you know, I want to talk about your comedy, obviously. And, you know, if you look at the work you do at first blush, you'd say, oh, gosh, this is a right of center comedian. But I have no idea what your politics are. You really don't talk about politics at all. You just happen to make fun of President Biden. Then you make fun of President Trump. Can you share a little bit more about that that part of your, for lack of a better word, brand? Because I, I think it's so interesting and I, I, I how, how you came to this place, because I think it's refreshing and it's funny. And it maybe is needed in this time because we're we're all so divisive. It's it's kind of fun to have someone who who kind of just offends everybody in in, in a fun and satirical way. Yeah, yeah. And once you realize like you're going to offend people no matter what you do, you know, <laughs> I mean, people are offended by Jerry Seinfeld. And he doesn't, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like they're offended by how unoffensive he is. The so people will find. So once you let go of that, and uh, yeah, I did just did a show in Pennsylvania. The great state of Pennsylvania. We love Christian. They came out so strong for me. We got 7 billion votes. Can you believe that? Can you believe it? Um, so a, a woman came up to me after and she's like, oh, you know, you did that right wing stuff. And I said, what? She said, you made fun of Biden. And I said, yeah, but I made fun of Trump, too. And, and uh, she claimed it was political. I said, no, I was making fun of their voice and mm-hmm. their how they walk and talk and um you know, I, I have plenty of issues with certain politics, but most of what I make fun of is not, you know, it's not inherently political. You know, I have a, a joke about, uh, you know, transitioning your child before they're old enough to know that they're not a pirate or something. And, <laughs> you know, that, that I, you know, when I was nine, my, I thought I was a pirate and my parents didn't say, okay. And they had my leg chopped off and replaced with a wooden peg. And, and, um, you know, a lot of people, including comedy club, you know, bookers and stuff will say, oh, that's so political. And I, I, j- I just can't believe you would see that people would see that as as political. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I mean, it, it, the sensitivities yeah. are so interesting. But, you know, on the flip side, your Trump is amazing. I think it's my favorite Trump impression. But when you do that, listen, Trump fans have some thin skins as well. Do you get a little uh, heat from the from the right when you do a Trump joke? And even though, like you said, not it's not much. skewering. Okay. Not much. No, Mm -hmm. no. The most I'll get is that they'll just comment Trump 2024, you know? So, (laughs) um, you know, I think also it's interesting because Trump is funny. He's actually funny. Yeah. So when they see a comedian doing Trump and it's funny, it's kind of just a continuation of him. I think that's how some people see it. And that's, that's, you know, they could see it, uh, interpret it however, however they want. Yeah. No, uh, on Trump, He's the most imitated person alive. Everyone could do a fair to middling Trump. It doesn't take a lot of skill, but obviously you bring it to a whole new level. But what, when you when you do Trump, what are you trying to do? Maybe that's different or special, or do you see something about him that you think your fellow comedians are missing? What's what's the secret sauce there? Uh, yeah, I, I like to find all the nuances in his voice. He actually has a, a, like a tremendous range. So anywhere from like a soft whisper to like a yell, you know, he'll mm-hmm. kind of like peter off, go, you know, we're doing so great, so great. No, it's, think of it, it's really Christian. And so people, this is what we do. And, then he yells. <laughs> and I, I just, it's like, it's just fascinating to watch. Like I'll, I'll actually sit and watch like a two hour Trump rally because mm-hmm. I keep getting all these little, these little nuances you know, like he'll bring a stranger up on the stage. I realize, like every every rally, he's trying to find a guy named John. Where's John? Let's get him up here to give him a shit. Where's John? He could be like in Pennsylvania or LA, California, and he's looking for a guy named John. And I'm like, oh, it's really funny. <laughs> There's always a John. <laughs> yeah. All right, I want to do a deep dive just for one second here. Do you, when you're watching that, when you're observing uh, a personality looking to kind of make your impression even better, are you taking notes, physically taking notes or just mental notes or how does that process work? 
I think I'm just imitating it as it goes. You okay. know, maybe I'll stop the the tape and and then try to imitate what he does. Um, you know, and then I'll and then I'll bring it on stage that night and see, mm-hmm. you know, see if people because sometimes even even like that that little John thing, people will will laugh. I'll go, oh, uh, okay, other people notice that. <laughs> that'll so that'll stay in there. <laughs> That's so interesting. You know, we touched. On this However, before. I ahead. will I will say I have a ma- I have a Make America Great Again hat that I wear when I do Trump sometimes, and uh, I I do have I, I believe an illegal immigrant um uh, uh she cleans my house like once a month and and I, I i was like in the living room doing trump when she walked in and i was just like oh i, I don't even know how to explain this to her because she doesn't speak english <laughs> but yeah i'm just in the living room going finish the wall finish the wall <laughs> no come right in consuela we're, we're fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah now, I want to get your quick take on Hollywood. Obviously, the strikes are going on, seemingly no end in sight. We don't know what's going to happen next. But any, I mean, you know, you're a, you're a performer, you're an artist, you have a, maybe a toe in that world and also doing some work outside that realm. What, what's your take on it or what's what's not being shared about this story? Because I just think you might have a unique take on it. And also, it's just, it feels consequential for the industry. It just, it feels like everything's changing at this point. Yeah, there's a lot of there's already been a huge shift. You know, you can see it just with comedy specials going on YouTube, mm-hmm. right? I mean, um, I forget his name. Uh, he's huge. I, I, I'll, I'll um, try to Schultz, think of it. Or... But no, he's he's in the vein of Schultz. He he put out a comedy special that just got you know tens of millions of views, and mm-hmm. now he's doing arenas, um, and. You know, I, I assume Netflix passed on him because mm-hmm. he didn't have a big following. Yeah. So the internet's kind of uh, creating this other outlet, and it's evening the playing field, and it and it gives you a kind of a true sense of what people want to see. YouTube specials have become wildly popular, and what's it, what's different about those is you can see the number. You don't know how many people are watching mm-hmm. a new special on Netflix. You, you 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 have no idea, and so it's 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 a, been a benefit to be able to go look at this number, you know, you can't deny it. And it, it translates into ticket sales. Um, and so I don't, I'm not sure I would, you know, I've, I've personally just lost respect for Netflix. I went Mm -hmm. on and watched, um, my buddy Mark Norman just put a special out, uh, great comedian. Hey, Hey comedy. If you know him, that's (laughs) what he sounds like. And, um, I, I've got somebody's password just to go on and watch his special but I liked his YouTube special better because it felt more rock and roll. Interesting. You know, I don't blame him for doing it because yeah, yeah. we have to make a living. But I, to be honest, I hope Hollywood crumbles. I hope they absolutely implode because, you know, they've they've cut themselves off at the knee um, once they started doing, you know, uh, diversity hiring instead of talent, and now the Oscars requiring. You know, a certain, you know, a certain amount of Latino, vegan, you know, amputee, uh, autistic grandmas on, in a movie to get an Oscar. And so uh, I just I think I think it's it's it is absolutely catastrophic. Yeah. And, and by the um, way, you, you make a great point. I think we really need some transparency on the numbers behind Netflix and Hulu and all these platforms. Because they say X and Y are, are doing great, or then they ignore the fact that others are just absolutely flatlining. But we don't know, and the artists don't know either, so they're frustrated too. So I think that may right. be a real benefit where they they have to finally open their books and show what's going on, and that that would be a good thing for I think for everyone. Yeah, and offer a residual system. You know, mm-hmm. I I know, I, you know, I've done a bunch of TV shows. I get checks every week. Um, for shows I've done six years ago and they'll say it played in this market and this many times or whatever. Um, but Netflix, you have no idea. I did a show called startup. Um, I had a very small role on it, but, uh, it was the number one show on Netflix for a while. Mm -hmm. And you know, I get checks for, for 10 bucks here Mm -hmm. and there. That, that show could have brought them in a million subscriptions. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, I, I think they have what they deserve and I, I don't care about the strike, you know, where was the strike when, you know, how many percentage of actors couldn't work because they didn't have a, vac- a vaccine card. That's a great point. So, you know what I mean? I, I, I have no sympathy. I don't care. I don't care about any of these celebrities losing work, especially if they didn't speak up against um, K 
cancel culture and, and the vaccine mandate. Yeah, I think between being too aggressively political in a, in a mean way, but also that that stance, I think that they lost a lot of goodwill that they would have had. You know, we've got the 2024 elections coming. <laughs> God help us all. Do you are you anticipating new impressions? Are you looking at new ways you can incorporate that or is it a little too soon or what's what you're taking that on the horizon? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, um, Trump winning would certainly give me a lot more work. <laughs> And um, I have wanted to do a Kamala Harris. I mean, if Biden wins, she'll probably be the president, mm-hmm. obviously, because he uh, he's going to be the first president to be assassinated by time. <laughs> <That's impressive. laughs> that's a new. Uh, yeah, that's a, a new way to go for a president <laughs> with the stairs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, so you have your work yeah, cut out for you. Yeah, always, always looking to do new ones. I should sit down and um, mm-hmm. and, and and pick out some new ones. Well, I think also maybe the news cycle may feed that into you. But uh, you know, one of the things I want to uh, kind of before I wrap things up. Your show over the years, your podcast, and now it's just the Tyler Fisher show. It's got the it's got a more classic title. But one of the reasons why I enjoyed it because the impressions are great and the comedy is wonderful and the observations are smart. But you have a lot of life lessons in there as well, and I think that's one of the reasons why podcasting is so interesting and personal. I want to just if you can open up a little bit about that that aspect of the show because it's not just chuckle chuckle impression. It's got some meat in its bones. Yeah. And was that the plan all along, or did that just happen for you as you're as you're talking into the mic? Yeah, it kind of happened, and it, it really was a result of um, you know the the wokeness in Hollywood and comedy and. I had no other outlet. I wasn't, you know, it's, it's shocking to think that I mean, I wasn't allowed to work because of some cases, my skin color, as you know, we talked last time I have mm-hmm. a pending lawsuit, discrimination lawsuit where I was told, you know, um, in plain terms, we're not taking you because you're a white man, which, uh, you know, that happened probably six or seven times in a row. Um, anywhere from a commercial that I was denied to a podcast, to an agent, to a manager. Um, so that combined with the, you now you can't work because you don't have a COVID vaccine. It was just like, it, it was just, it was really a survival mode. Um, I had to just kind of get on there and talk this stuff out. And then it sort of evolved. Um, and, uh, and, and it might, might keep evolving. I might actually start a podcast with another comedian mm-hmm. um, where, you know, I'll continue to, to do the things I do, but it might be nice to have a, another person to do it with. Gotcha. And, of course, we'll learn more about the movie soon before we let you go. Are there other projects you've got in the hopper, stand-up specials, anything, new impressions that you're just fine-tuning right now that you can share? Um. Well... Yeah, I mean, I've been working on my uh, my Ben Shapiro, you know, um, who's the master of slipping ads into <laughs> about every other sentence. So I've I've been uh, been working on Ben Shapiro, mm-hmm. you know, giving a eulogy um, for his friend Greg. You know, Greg was really a wonderful person, Christian. He's a wonderful, wonderful person. And as we know, he wrapped his car around a telephone pole because he did not get enough sleep. If only he had been sleeping on a helium sleep mattress, <laughs> this never would have happened. <laughs> Use code RIP Greg for twenty percent off. So I'll, uh, I'll probably do some more uh, Ben by popular demand. Gotcha. And I'm I'm touring, yeah. So I'm basically working on my next new special. So um, I did just get my very first touring agent of my career. So it took me fourteen years, but Excellent. worth the wait. I got a guy who's you know not a woke um, piece of garbage, mm-hmm. and he doesn't care about all the things everyone else does. So. So we're we're hitting the ground running. I'll be uh, I'll be in Texas all September. Uh, end of September, I'll be in uh, Houston, Austin, and Dallas. Um, then I'll be going to Chicago, um, Zanies, Chicago in, in October, and then you know we're, we're really going to try to hit like every market in the country, and then and then um, go overseas. Excellent. Actually, I did have one last question. It's kind of a it, it's an oddly personal one. Do you find that when you're with friends or people that they say, "Oh, do the impression, do the impression," and, and does that does that drive you a little crazy, or are you okay with that? Um, it doesn't actually happen that often. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I have interesting. Good friends okay. who, who don't uh, <laughs> who right. don't do that to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're not having coffee because I'd I'd probably ask you about twenty times. So that's <laughs> I'd be, sure. I'd be well, wildly I unfriendlike, can't... but I'm gonna not spill the beans. But the person who I'm 
planning to do a podcast with uh-huh. also does really amazing impressions. So it, 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 everybody might get like a double or quadruple dose. Excellent. Um, with this team up. Yeah. Excellent. That would satisfy me. I'm sure a lot of other people, but uh, Tyler, thank you for joining the show once more. Of course, you can see him break out all those impressions, funny observations, great stuff overall on the Tyler Fisher show. You can find it on YouTube for free, of course, and also for free, you can see a standup special, the new normal. God bless YouTube doing it right. And if you want to follow him on social media, it is at Ty the fish fish is F I S C H Tyler. Love your stuff. And I can't wait to hear about that movie. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you having me. Well, that's it for the show. Thank you to Radio America for having me as part of their fine podcast lineup. And while I have your ear, I hope you'll drop by HollywoodInToto.com. I update it seven days a week, and it gives you all the information about what's woke, what's not, and what's worth your hard-earned dollars. Until next time, I hope everyone gets happy, as Elvis Costello might say.